It was a wild week of fantasy football. Find out the conclusion of Jason and I's matchup. Go through the studs and the duds, all the big news, and make some decisions heading towards the playoffs. Don't miss a minute. Make sure you click that subscribe button and enjoy. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Contrary to popular opinion, the Megalodon episode was not our final episode. That was the popular opinion? It, it did seem that way this morning. Yeah, there was uh, there was a consensus out there that it was just that good. Well, it was at least they thought it was Jason's last show. Ah. Mm, gotcha, once they saw gotcha. the final box score of yes. our head-to-head matchup. Nope. We continue. We chug along. Yes. And uh, still still go for victories. Thoughts on Gabe Davis in general? Just like general overview. <laughs> right, a, right the back of his uh, football card. F- back, what a blocker. What a blocker. Yeah, that was highlighted on the, on the broadcast. Enjoy these bench points. <laughs> that would be the... <laughs> That would be the other. Is that uh, the tagline for his company? Like Gabe Davis LLC is. Uh, enjoy en- these bench points. Enjoy, enjoy, and and if you put him in your lineup next week. Oh, enjoy the goose. <laughs> enjoy the goose. Um, really wild weekend. We had fantasy football drama internally all over the place. Had big fights in dynasty leagues about tanking and starting out players, and you know the only thing that grown men can fight about. Well, you know one of very i mean we're off of thanksgiving weekend. You know, grown, we know plenty of things grown american men <laughs> um so yeah it, it was wild um uh, turns out Kyron williams is fine yeah that's yeah, uh yeah he's healthy seems healthy i want to always come back from injuries against the cardinals like that's kind of my like if i get injured i'm gonna look at the schedule and be like uh, 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 yep. Uh, week eighteen. I'm coming back. Uh, did did Kyron time that out? Like his injury wasn't that bad, and he was just for ti- sure. And he was just tired. He's like, hey guys, you know, if you put me on IR, yeah. I can come back against Cardinals. I'll, I'll be super healthy, guys. Rest me up. It was uh, it was definitely a weekend where I, I at least I felt like the matchups, like it, they kind of came true. You know what I mean? Like sometimes, you know, we we sit here and players are ranked based on. Uh, these matchups and and sometimes they overcome them and sometimes they don't like this week it just felt like if you had a great matchup that looked good on paper there were a lot of players that performed up to those expectations suds and duds on today's show and um yeah brooks you mentioned uh the megalodon episode we have giveaway winners uh when are we announcing those tomorrow tomorrow okay brooks is still sifting through the tweets so many so many tweets so busy weekend. We always ask the Foot Clan on Instagram, which you can uh, you can follow us over there, Instagram.com slash fantasy footballers, also on X at the FF Ballers. We asked for your reactions in uh pun form. Mm-hmm. And we got them. This is the best form. <laughs> I guess we'll start with yeah. Pat. Fire Muth. Oh, the man, the Muth, the legend. He, in fact, got Luth. Uh, we got Ramandre Stevenson. To infinity and beyond. Uh, like. <laughs> oh, you had Kyron Thrilliams. <laughs> or I win, Williams. Or Kai win, Williams. It's really a self. <laughs> Who put I win, Williams in here? Mm, uh, I, I mean, love this player. How about Yalen Hurts? Jonathan Taylor touchdowns. Or uh, Rice Rice Baby. Oh, Rashi, nice. Or there was some bad with George Little. Or Dalton Schultz the bed. Mm. Or Poop Nakua. <laughs> beep, beep. It's the Gus Bust. <laughs> There's also a uh, subpar performance from Doo Doo Metcalf. Yeah. And Lames Connor. And finally, Saquon Barfley. Yeah, that was one of those, uh, hmm, not so good. 
Not Not so good. The man can only do so much. It was a weird week. Uh, For those tracking at home, because the the tweets were wild, I went into last night's game. uh, Jason had kind of conceded defeat on Thursday because Dak and – Dak and CeeDee Lamb. We haven't talked because we haven't had a show since That's then. That's right. It's we're we're usually up to date, but uh Dak and CeeDee went off. Yeah. Dak had forty points in our league while my tight end yeah. is Dak's recipient, got one reception. So we thought we thought it was kind of uh Jason. It was had, a big reception, Jason. Don't take that away from Jason me. Jason yes, already have four made his fantasy points. Made his bed. Yeah, Doug I, mean, is grave. I, I I assumed I was toast then. And yeah, you you changed your avatar in our Slack channel to the word gone. Yeah. Um, and with a with a, uh, a nice, skull. A nice skull. And then I, I did gone. I got out of town, went up north, kind of tried to unplug. Tried to be eaten by a bear. Tried to be eaten by a bear, slathered myself up in honey, <laughs> ran around the woods. No bears to be found. They're hibernating. Oh, my yeah, bears. When you want to be eaten and you can't be eaten, can you? Well, bear's not interested in losing. It's an embarrassing walk back to the cabin. What's a real shame is I had mentioned, uh, I believe, on the Megalodon episode that if things went really poorly on Thanksgiving, mm-hmm. then that would be the example. I would take Josh Dobbs, Josh Downs out of my lineup, put Gabe Davis in my lineup so that I have more big boom mm. opportunity. So that came true. Thursday, I, I dominated. Mm-hmm. And then I got out of town, forgot to do that <laughs> as I <laughs> unplugged. And, um, well, the rest of the week went like a roller coaster. There was one point in time where t- towards the – Halfway halftime of of uh, yesterday's pre Sunday night game, which became Sunday night football. It was so late that uh, Bills Eagles the Bills game, Eagles game was unbelievable. It took forever. It was it, it was yeah. a great game, but it took forever. I thought it was Sunday night football. Like it was like it was pitch black out here. Yeah, um, and then you know Jalen Hurts, my guy, had six points at halftime, and all of Andy's players were doing well at halftime. I was projected to lose by thirty. This is. You know the game, then the night's over. We don't even have anybody playing on Monday, so I concede the game. And then Jalen Hurts went off. Devontae Adams no longer gets uh, targets in the second half. James Conner does nothing in the second half. Yeah, where in the world? It looks like I'm going to win, brother. <laughs> I mean, I am. All I need is 12 points from Eckler in Sunday Night Football. That's it. This was the point in time where I drove home very upset. I. Uh, <laughs> put into my plan oh, man i put into my plan uh the the scientific approach of not watching your opponent's players dude i mean and i did not tried, watch true yeah delivered i sat outside by the fire it's peer reviewed now and i contemplated my life choices and my career choices get a science journal i would keep your career andy because you won austin eckler which i'm very sad did not have a negative pun today i would have really really yeah. enjoyed that um but uh yeah. awful excrement there, that's nice. Oh, I like that. Yeah, oh, why you got to do that to Austin? I, Sorry, see, it feels man. bad, but also the fumbles probably felt bad, too. The fumbles, the lack of work in the pass the game, the touchdowns, the drops. Uh, you know. Uh, so I won by five. You did win by five. I won by five. I, and I, Gabe Davis was on my bench. And Gabe Davis was on your bench, mm-hmm. and um, yeah. that was – there's your, there's your update. Mike's just sitting over there alternating between which of us he thinks is more pathetic in our approach to fantasy. Oh, you're head-to-head. Don't worry. I think you guys. I've got can, good competition, right? I'm yeah. not just you guys. No, it's can, not just you. You can cross the finish line together. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Old yeah. hands. So no, now, this is a cliff. <laughs> We're going over the cliff now. Last thing of personal league before we move on to the week is, as it stands now, it looks like both of us are actually still in the playoffs. Yeah, so it was all, all the whining was just not worth it. <laughs> so well, still, still a couple weeks to go. TPD. Oh my. So we Mike, have more weeks. Yeah, you we got more, more weeks, weeks of this. Sorry, oh, for it, Yeah, so um, there you go. There's your update. Uh, there's your puns. I mean, I, I asked the question this morning because we got some news like that we'll talk about as well, but how much money is Austin Eckler losing right now? Because yeah. he's going to be a free agent. He's going to be retired. Is that – I mean, do you genuinely believe that? Like, uh, it, it really he depends. He seems like he is a hurt – like it he's de- playing through injury. I think it depends on on Austin himself, the human, whether he wants to take a lower salaried veteran type thing to go be committee. A, a committee back. If that's what he wants, he'll he'll get an offer with that. Uh, it seems like very unlikely that a team would go out and based on his great, incredible career at this stage, age, and running back 
financial landscape that they're going to go, hey, here's a nice big bada boom three year contract. Like it's just not to be a happen. starter. Yeah, no, that he, he's still this Austin Eckler is way better than th Michael Carter. This Austin Eckler is way better than a bunch of the third down backs that get snaps here and there. If, like you said, he's willing to accept that. But from dynasty perspective, yeah, did we get the cliff? Yeah, I mean, he's one of the you know our main league is a keeper league. He is uh one of my keepers from this last season, and I'm not sure if he's going in that that lottery or not. We're gonna, I mean, we don't know who he plays for next year. That was the crazy part. Our our entire matchup maybe came down to the back and forth <laughs> Eckler Saquon situation. Both players stunk this week. Mike, how'd you do? You you have a good week? Uh, personally, no. yeah, no, no, professionally, no. <laughs> uh, professionally, we did all right. Yeah, yeah. yeah starts the week. We're yeah, okay. Yeah, they did all right. Yeah, pretty nice. So uh, we got uh, big news to talk about. Yeah. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Well, the big news this morning, the Panthers fired head coach Frank Reich. Carolina is 1-10. in 10. Their owner, David Tapper, has now fired three head coaches, mm -hmm. including two mid-season. Yeah, back-to-back -back years. So, that mid-season back-to-back years is impressive. It really is. And this really seems like when it happens after the game, to me that's like, you know, that's angry man walking into a room. Mm -hmm. That's uh, very reactionary. And so you've seen at least two years where that's happened after losses. There's a lot of excitement when David Tepper took over this franchise in 2018. This is a, someone that's going to come in, wants to spend money, wants to be aggressive. Things that I think fan bases really, really like. The thing that I think the fan base is starting to get upset about is the tinkering, the toy, the, the you know, the, like you David want David Temper. You he's want got, oh, he's got himself a temper. Got you, him. You want the owner that will be aggressive, that will pay, write the blank checks, all that. But you also want him to not meddle. And you want them to let the football people do football things and, and have uh, patience. Yeah, have a little bit of patience. So it's it's interesting. I'm I'm sure Jeff Saturday's calling up Tepper now. <laughs> I mean, like, look, last year I took over. The Colts are doing good. <laughs> Sounds like you got a leadership problem. These men need a leader. It is. I mean, if you really look at the situation, and we can talk about Bryce Young's dynasty. We can talk about the the mess of wide receivers that they have, the offensive line problems. It it seems like if you if you say something negative this week about Bryce Young or about Kyler Murray, all I get is they have no help, they have no O line, they have no blah blah blah. I I am curious what the expectations could have been for Carolina at this stage of you know you got eleven games played, you have a rookie quarterback, you have uh, definitely got a, a support issue around him. Like, is David Tepper happy at, at, at three and seven? I mean, I I just don't know where. Seems like unfair expectations I, I, for for Frank Reich to a degree. I I think it's not a matter of the record, to be honest. I think it's a matter of what you're seeing on the field, and what you're seeing on the field is okay. truly horrific, like it, uncompetitive. They are as bad as any team you know gets. They they, they put up ten points against the Titans when they had opportunities all game, and they just they couldn't do anything. And that's pretty much what they've done the whole season. And your boy. Mike, Adam Thielen, not, what? not a lot of opportunities. Your man, <laughs> your grandpa. So Frank Reich is out. Um, yeah. There you go. Also, I, mean, I mean, honestly, this is. It's irrelevant news to me for yeah. the assets of fantasy. I mean, right now it's it's hard to even feel comfortable starting Adam Thielen, and he's been the only potential starter for fantasy here uh, going forward. Uh, you know, TBD on who they're going to hire. They're just going to have an interim, and then in the off season they'll find someone that hopefully can fix Bryce Young the way that we saw with Trevor Lawrence. You know, he had a rookie season that was really bad with Urban Meyer, and they said, "Hey, we got to go find the right person, make the move quick, and resurrect that uh, the the hope of that you know first overall draft pick." He seems to be though a delightful boss. Like I would. Tepper? Like, yeah. Right? Uh, yeah. No? Yeah, I mean, uh, I guess you better produce. <laughs> Frank Reich was 10-1. and 1. He never would have been fired. Uh, Mark Andrews on That's IR. Yeah. yeah. Aaron Rodgers could begin practicing next week, still targeting a week what? 16 what? return. Why? Oh, I, I, I remember why now. Oh, okay. Because it's about him. 
Uh, yeah. Okay. I when I said he wouldn't come back, I thought he'd be putting like the team in 2024, uh, like in first place. But now he gets to go and be like to me. This is isn't it about the headline now? You came back super quick. What week is he targeting? Do sixteen we, week 16. allegedly. Well, of course it's gonna it's gonna be week sixteen, not seventeen. You want to come back against, against the Manders or the Browns? This is another target the right matchup, right? I I don't get it. Um, Tim Boyle though, he's gonna keep starting, huh? I told yeah. you I don't think Robert Sale is the guy, huh? man. David Tepper needs to get in there quick. <laughs> I see. I think I don't. I don't. I blame can't stand Robert, Robert Sala. Really? Yeah. I, I like I, him a lot. I I've think turned, he's a good coach. I've turned on him. No. I, I, describe that for me, because I don't. I don't know how this is his fault. He's got. You know, he's a defensive-minded head coach who has his defense being. No, you're the head coach. Top three. Yeah. No, no I, that's I know. fine. You, but, you've got a great defense. I get it. But you have no quarterback. You've been given no quarterback. The the general manager needs to be fired here for not going out and trading for a Josh Dobbs or a. Signing a Carson Wentz off the street or doing something early in the season. I mean, he's not the only one to blame by any stretch of the imagination. He's also been dealt, you know, the injury card this year. But you have lost your locker room two years in a row. I mean, you. But what could he have done? He could have made. He could have made pivoted to Tim Boyle last year, earlier. He could not have done it. He could have made changes earlier. Yeah, I not mean, last year. You can't. You can't take the number two overall pick and just be like, okay, we're already done with you in the middle of the season. But that would have been the better move, because the, he lost the locker room and they had to do it by default. Like both seasons, Maybe. he's waited too long to make changes, and um, you know I don't think he's made good decisions as a from a head coaching perspective on this team. And like, you know, what is the, going on with Trevor Simeon? Right, he must have lost his right arm. <laughs> like he has to have, because. If you're sitting here watching Tim Boyle, oh, I mean, there's God. a reason that you didn't move off of Zach Wilson. It was because the backup was Tim Boyle. But Trevor Simeon's been on the practice squad, and that guy can actually play football. The The beat reporters... At they, one time he could. Yeah, I mean, that's why I'm saying he must have lost his arm. Because if they're saying, hey, we're but sticking with is, Tim Boyle, they must be seeing something look, bad. There is some, uh, there's some accountability to... Look, I don't know what happens behind the scenes. But... Everything that Robert Sala has done for two years is he goes out there and goes to bat for Zach Wilson for X amount of weeks. He's accountable for that. If you go, if you go and you you go to the general manager and say this guy doesn't have it in week two when you've seen him last year, isn't that a, a, an evaluation standpoint? You're in practice every day. Like this guy doesn't have a go get me Carson Wentz. This guy doesn't have a go get me Jacoby Brissett. This guy doesn't have a go get. I mean, they spent the money on Aaron Rodgers and other pieces. So that's the part that I hold him accountable. To. Yeah, one hundred percent. You're right there. We just don't know that that didn't happen. You know correct, what I mean? Like correct. we don't we don't know correct. that publicly. He's not saying, "Hey, uh, we support Zach Wilson. He's a great guy. We 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 uh, we think he, we see a lot we like." And then behind the scenes, going like, "Get me someone that can play quarterback." Yeah, I mean, it, I feel bad for Jets fans. I really do. Yeah, the window of such a great defense is like mm -hmm. it, those things just don't last forever. We we saw it years ago with the Jacksonville Jaguars when they had that unfathomably otherworldly defense, and you you thought that would just stick around, and then. The next year, you wait too long, and they're just not good at defense anymore. Maybe, maybe, um, maybe that's why Rodgers needs to come back. If you want to, you want to give him the benefit of the doubt, maybe to invigorate a, a team and a fan base and give them hope for the next year. Yeah, maybe. I don't know, or or you get hurt again, and that'd be a long summer. Oh man, bunch of injuries yesterday. Chris Olave exited with a concussion. Rashid Shahid left early. That um, that blew up some DFS for me. That Rashid Shahid mm. injury. Because he was he was cheap. Yeah, and Olave was dominating. Yeah, he had he a was. good game even with the the exit. Yeah, forty. He played less than half of the game, and he ended seven for one fourteen, and then went up for a, I mean, a really bad throw, and ended up landing on his head. Amari um, Cooper exited with a rib injury late. That didn't look good. Dorian Thompson Robinson concussion. P.J. Walker came in. He looked exactly the same as who he is. Yeah, it. It's probably Joe Flacco time. Javante Williams uh, left and returned. Uh, same with Etienne and Baker Mayfield and then Cooper Cup. I, wh what do you do with Cooper Cup right I now? I don't know, man. Well, it wasn't just Cup. I mean, both Cooper Cup and uh, Puka Nakua had down games. Well, they combined for about 40 yards receiving or something? But Stafford had a down game, too. No. What? That's the point. Oh, no, he's being sarcastic. Like, he's being, that, is, that is the point. How does Stafford? How do the Rams put up thirty-seven points? I mean, yes, Kyron Williams. What? What? Two, Higby got two touchdowns. Exactly. Yeah. It, it what just, are you doing to us, Matthew? <laughs> 
it, it was that's un- mean. It was unfortunate that it happened that way. Obviously, Stafford ended up with a top ten performance, had four passing touchdowns. They just didn't go to the right players. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And but um, it's like legitimately. But so, it's been a little bit since. It's been Cooper a lot Cups. of it. <laughs> it's been a lot of it. Yeah, I'm looking at the box score right now. Cooper Cup came back in week five. All was well, 118 yards. The next week against Arizona, 148 and a touchdown. But since then, 29 yards, 21. Those were both fully healthy games. N- well, not for Stafford. Week eight, sure, yeah, week yeah, eight yeah, Stafford I'm, left in the middle of the game, and then week right, nine. But I'm, I'm just reading Cooper Cup's numbers. The week after that was two for 48, 84% of the game. So most of the game, that's maybe he could have fixed it at the very end, and then. Another hurt game with 11 yards, and now another full game with 18 yards. Well, I, look, you, you, I don't know what you You were do. on Sunday Live on YouTube. Uh, I was in here listening, and, and you gave the same advice that I would have given in your shoes, which is that when Cooper Cup is active and you're facing I'm, Arizona. Yeah, I'm playing him. Like You have both sides of the coin here. You have the side where you're like, okay, Kyron Williams is back from injury. Just put the faith in the matchup off of an injury, mm-hmm. and, he, and he's the best player on the week. Then you have – Cooper Cup, who's one of the best receivers in football, if not the best, and coming off an injury, and you put the faith in the matchup, and it doesn't work out. And your quarterback had 229 yards and four passing touchdowns. <laughs> and now you go uh, – <laughs> now, now you're playing against yeah. the Cleveland Browns, and so how do you have the confidence in Cooper Cup having had a, a bad month and a half, uh, partially with injury, but he's still – He's still dealing with it. We saw him go out and into the game. Well, yeah. and they play Cleveland, Baltimore. Yeah, that's what yeah, I mean. How yeah. how are you going to be able to be confident starting him? And you, how do you bench him? <laughs> well, I mean, I think. <laughs> I mean, it's just a, it's an impossible situation. <laughs> I mean, uh, you're going to have to make. How do you a, play him? How do you not play him? Yeah, how do you, can you half play? I think you just you just cut him. You just, I don't know. <laughs> I can't handle this. This, <laughs> this is your decision now. <laughs> I, I like the idea of having a fantasy football <laughs> league where it is all about the like mental peace of mind. Yeah, that's you it. You just get rid of the most difficult decisions you have. You just cut them off the team. Mm-hmm. You just play the most pedestrian. You're, you're someone else's problem. Yeah, exactly. All right, that was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. We're going to take a quick break and get into the studs and duds. Uh, you got my head spinning with that whole. Uh, I mean, what if you had a league where if someone gets injured, they have to be dropped? <laughs> oh man, that's not fair. Uh, all right, let's uh, let's walk through this week. See what we got going forward. Studs of the week presented by NFL Sunday Ticket on YouTube and YouTube TV. Well, let's start with the game of the week. I mean, the Josh Allen Jalen Hurts head to head matchup. It was. Absolutely incredible. Uh, Field Yates put it out there on Sunday. Jalen Hurts and Josh Allen became the first opposing quarterbacks in NFL history to have multiple passing touchdowns and multiple rushing touchdowns in the same game. Uh, Josh Allen was a monster. I mean, 29 for 51, 339 and two, two rushing touchdowns, 81 yards in the ground. This game had a 48 and a half point over under. And when you got to halftime, you're like, that was, uh, that was toast. You're like, what is. Like all the hopes, all the dreams, all the expectations, all the DFS, all the, uh, you know, everything. Everything was super disappointing, and and there and was then, a reason for it. You had awful weather. You know, th- this was a, a a rainy game where it didn't seem like anything was gonna click. And you saw this the previous week with the Eagles and Kansas City. You had Mahomes versus Jalen Hurts in a weather rainy game, and it just never. You know, at the end of that game, you were still pretty disappointed. So this one was. Not one you saw the second half and overtime going the way it did, but it was pretty awesome for fantasy considering Dak Prescott threw for 331 and four touchdowns, and he's the quarterback three on the week. Yeah, I mean, Jalen Hurts, 18 for 31, 200 yards passing, three touchdowns, 14 for 65, two on the ground, including the game winner. We're sitting in here watching it yesterday. Mike and I were both facing Jalen Hurts going, it's like you – no, it did not hurt so good. It hurt so bad. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it depends on which side yeah, of the I game mean, we, you're on. And we're watching this game, and it's like everything that you – if you wanted something to happen in Jalen Hurts' favor, it was happening. I mean, he was making third and longs, converting them. He he was scrambling, and he didn't look himself scrambling. Like mm-hmm. his 
his knee is clearly bothering him and it didn't matter. And, you know, I was telling Mike in the middle of the game, I'm like, dude, if they kick a field goal here, they're going to lose this game. Talking about the, the bills overtime. The bills, bills in overtime, which now Josh Allen is 0-5 in overtime since the rules have changed. What a loser. In his favor. Or in because of that game where he did not get the opportunity after the field goal to go down and, and win the game. And that loser, Dak Prescott, uh, like you said, third this week. Mike started the week three thirty one and four on Thanksgiving. Um, it was it was a great performance. Top three quarterback in five of the last six starts. Uh, you, you, there's there's no one in fantasy who's been more valuable than Dak Prescott. I tweeted Mike. I don't know if you saw it. I, I did. I gave you a heart. I appreciate did you? it. I tweeted yeah. you some credit. That second half sleeper, Dak Prescott. I mean, look at the matchups coming up. Oh yeah, Seattle. Yes, uh, please. Oh yeah, Philadelphia. Heck yep. yeah, yep. Buffalo. Do, do yes. <laughs> I mean, Miami. Miami. Keep going, Detroit. It's the <laughs> entire season. I mean, there's it, no, there's no matchup that is like a neutral matchup. They're all positive for the quarterback. I remember at the trade deadline, Mike tried to send me like Tua for cheap, and I was like, "Why? I'm just playing Dak every yeah. game. I'm like, I'm not touching somebody else." C.J. Stroud, he's on. Like, I have my list of players I don't like watching, and mm. I tweet that weekly and. Mac Jones took his rightful place on the top of that throne. Um, <laughs> Bryce he, Young, though, making his first appearance. Well, not that it should have been his first, but there were other players. I mean, Derek Carr looked pretty terrible yesterday, too. But at the top of the players I want to watch play football on every down, C.J. Stroud. C.J. Stroud, another 300-yard game, two more touchdowns, one rushing touchdown, just barely, and I mean barely, Failed to come back in this game because a 60-yard field goal went off the center, mm -hmm. uh, the upright. He's the quarterback four in fantasy since week three. And you watch what happens in their line. Like, he'll move around. He just moves around until somebody comes open. It's the most Mahomesian kind of uh, quarterback play I've seen in a while, if I'm honest. Like, he does not look to run. He looks to take time until one of his very talented receivers breaks open, which they always do. And when I when I was scouting him uh, for the NFL draft season, the superpower that I thought he had is I've never seen someone more accurate on the move. When he is running, scrambling, not like you know, he, and he throws the ball while running. It's pinpoint. It's exactly where the ball needs to be every single time. Yeah, uh, he had a fifty something yard catch to Tank Dale called back in this game too. Uh, he did. It, it he did have a one kind of boneheaded decision there on the. Uh, was like taking the, a sack or no no when they it was oh yeah third, it was, it was, third and short or fourth no, no, it, was, it, was it was fourth fourth and it one was, and he threw. it was fourth and one and then and he chucks up a bomb and it was oh I love it baby <laughs> it, it was CJ just just get the he first wasn't down. on the run enough for it to be accurate on that one. but look it, it, let's talk dynasty who do you want. Like, where is C.J. Stroud in the hierarchy of dynasty quarterbacks uh, at this he's point? He's rocketing up. Yeah, he is rocketing up. He's still below he's the... Hurts, Allen, Mahomes, uh, All the Herbert. super mobile uh, quarterbacks. Yeah, th those guys um, I would have above him. Kyler or Stroud? I think Kyler for fantasy. I still think Kyler's running is going to... Does he's, that mean you put Kyler ahead of Herbert? He's in that same tier to me. Okay. Um, yeah, I agree. He's in, the, he's in the tier with those guys... Uh, you, you, Lamar connected to Tank Dell for multiple years now because they're both rookies together. And this is one of the things where uh, uh, you don't need Bryce Young to be as good as what you've seen from C.J. Stroud. C.J. Stroud has looked like an absolute superstar, but the excuses of, well, you don't have the greatest weapons, you don't have a good offensive line, and it's like, well, yeah, now, now at this point, we're like, well, Tank Dell's a superstar, Nico Collins is a superstar. It, these guys weren't. You know what I mean? Like the the the, the Tank Dell was a uh, was drafted behind Jonathan Mingo, who you know the, the the money given to Adam Thielen is more than anyone that's on uh, the Houston Texans, more than Nico Collins. So it's like, are the weapons making C.J. Stroud? I think C.J. Stroud's taking Naking advantage the of the weapons a little bit more. The Bears traded the number one pick, which was Bryce Young, mm -hmm. and they received D.J. Moore. They received the first round pick, which is their offensive tackle. They received the second round pick, which is their their cornerback. Then they got another first round pick, which is now right now it's the number one pick. Yeah, it's Caleb Williams, and they're gonna f either take Caleb Williams or I mean, or you have trade a full it for rebuild. another haul. I mean, yeah. they, if they trade that pick for a haul, yeah, that means that their number one pick got traded for just like ten assets. Oh, by the way, another second rounder in that mix as well. It's wild. Uh, when you play the game of quarterbacks and you lose you die 
Trevor Lawrence, another big game, thanks to the rushing touchdown on top of a passing touchdown. Uh, Calvin Ridley looks good right now with with uh, Zay Jones back. <laughs> it was it was although a, he did drop a wide open touchdown. He dropped a wide open touchdown, and it was weird. I I'm pretty sure he had no yards in the first half, and like everything Calvin Ridley did was in the second. He's a he's a weird guy right now. Stafford had the big game. Let's talk running backs. Kyron Williams. 16 for 143 on the ground, 6 for 61, and 2 through the air. 200 yards. So that's where all the yards that Cup and Nakua didn't get went. Uh, also, Higby, two touchdowns. But Cleveland, Baltimore the next two weeks. So You're going to start him. Um, yes. He, he's, you know, this isn't, a, this isn't a debatable, I'm not sure, the matchup is bad. Let me look at who else I should have in there. Kyron is getting so much volume. Uh, he's a workhorse. He's looked great. I, I would not be benching Kyron. It is. Uh, he has taken advantage of the best matchups. That's for sure. I mean, his last, ironically, the last two games he's played were against Arizona. Where he was the running back two and running back one. He was RB four against the 49ers in week two. Yes. Yes, he was. Um, I believe he's, he's, he was on a six touchdowns and six games streak in that run. So, I'm not saying don't bench him. I'm just saying 37 points might not be in the cards for the next oh, two, yeah, no, it won't be. two weeks. Christian McCaffrey 37 is points is probably in the cards. For him? <laughs> Every week for Christian. Philly? Doesn't matter. Tough, it is tough fun. matchup. <laughs> don't care. Yeah. B. John Robinson, 16 for 91 and a touchdown. Six targets, caught one through the air. Uh, it's the first 20-point fantasy game of the year. Getting red zone work and not surprisingly, scoring touchdowns on them yep. because he's really, really good. And look, Arthur, <laughs> I mean, I said this right before they went to buy, but it's like he might be self-reflecting, okay? I'm, uh, Maybe. I, like, <laughs> I know we've coined him the butthole, but I've, <laughs> I've watched – I've watched so I've watched more press conferences with Arthur Smith this year than I think of any coach I've ever watched. <clears throat> I know his voice so well now. If I hear him on a radio station while I'm driving, I know immediately that's Arthur. And I hate to I hate to Oh I hate no, to say don't this. you dare. No. But I kind of like no. some of his logic sometimes and I'm no. seeing good things that, Oh man, like, I, no. <laughs> I feel like he's maybe, a sim he's an maybe, Arthur sympathizer. Maybe it's like Loki. Or like the Scarlet Witch, where he's like he's a uh, bad he's a bad guy, but he can do some good, <laughs> you know. Like maybe oh he's no. Look, I mean, if he gives, if the Sith take over the universe, yeah. it'll be pretty good. I'm just saying, it, we got to give credit, Kyle. You're on the microphone, right? I am, and you're a lifelong born and bred, you know, bleed Falcons red type of guy. Uh, you buy any of this from Jason? I like Jason's optimism. I'm not going to lie. I it's refreshing. Now, are they in the playoffs right now? They are. They're leading the division. Under yeah. 500. Yeah. I think he had a very – like when I saw the end of that game and Arthur Smith was handshaking and, and high-fiving, that was a man very relieved to get back into the yes. win column. But you know what? Using your best players, kind of one of the keys that I've always had. It is. Mike, it when you coach uh, your kids' yeah. league, do you often – Focus on the better players uh, when for I'm victories when I'm allowed to. When when you're, oh yeah, I guess you might have some. It's a it's a rec league, so we have some. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. We have some, yeah. but when you get to the playoffs, is that what Arthur thinks this is? Maybe <laughs> uh, next week is going to be must watch television at the New York Jets for the Atlanta Falcons. Oh man, I uh, I will be I will legit be pumped to watch that game because of Bijan. No, just for all of the implications, like. They're off of a thirty, uh, a three-game losing streak. Yeah, and if they go, they're favored in, on the road. And if they go lose to the Jets team that I just watched play on Black Friday, I mean that'll, that'll be incredible. Well, all right. Well, Isaiah Pacheco, fifteen for fifty-five, 55! two touchdowns, five catches. Uh, just a solid day's work. Yeah, very, very involved. Um. He, he, you know, when you get 20 opportunities and you're getting passing work and you're on a great offense, you just you keep rolling. This next week against Green Bay is a very plus matchup for running backs. Enjoyed everybody tweeting at me how bad my start of the week Raheem Mostert was. 
halfway through, three quarters of the way through the game. But he was not a bad start. No, 20 for 94. Two touchdowns, closing it out strong. Woo! Thank goodness. Uh, gets to play Washington. One of the most hilarious touchdowns week. of, like, he wasn't sure he wanted to score that last one. Is that what that was? Yes. When he was running parallel yeah, when, to the When he got goal through line? the whole line with the time running out, he was looking around <laughs> trying to see. Am I allowed to do this? He was, if, do I do I finish this touchdown? Do I lay down? What am I supposed to do here? And I guess he didn't get any signs, so he just, yeah, he just scored a touchdown. It's like Zay Flowers. Zay Flowers oh, no, Zay Flowers, Zay Flowers waved it off. <laughs> He's <laughs> like, I know you told me to get down, but I need this. <laughs> yeah. He should not have scored that touchdown, but fantasy managers are very happy he did. Two touchdowns for him as well. Yeah. I guess we'll talk about him. Uh, Jonathan Taylor, two touchdowns. Josh Jacobs with the breakaway dominant first half. And then uh, goodbye. Heading to the bye. And uh, they lost. Derrick Henry, two touchdowns. Hey, Mike, start of the week. The Yeti. Hey, the snow in Vermont is undefeated. Tony Pollard. Hey. Scored again. Ra right. Ramondre, uh, the man, the plan. He looked, he looked very, very good. 21 for 98. Touchdown? Um, yeah, got a touchdown. Got five targets. Caught all five of them. Did not get to 10 receiving yards. But the the fact that, that Stevenson put up the game that he put up with the amount of turnovers that the Patriots had from both of their quarterbacks, I mean, that's a that's a great game. There was a point yesterday morning, Mike and I were in the studio. Jason was out of town, and uh, six games were on. Oh, gosh. and we were we were it like was, a quarter through these games. Yeah. There had not been a touchdown. Mm -hmm. There were, uh, I mean, Zappy and Mac Jones were taking turns throwing the worst interceptions you ever seen. Uh, Tommy DeVito was like trying to get his best sack posture in place before the hit. I mean, some gross football yesterday morning. You're, but, but winner, winner, Tommy DeVito, winner. Sorry, <laughs> yes, Chuba Hubbard had a a monster what? game. Chuba. Chuba had five targets, five for 47. There was a lot of check down uh, Charlie stuff going on, 14 for 45 and a touchdown on the ground. In fact, Miles Sanders had more carries. So if you're looking at, like, what could change with the head coaching change, like you could see more Miles Sanders. He was awful, but you could see more. And then Najee Harris ended up dude, 15 for 99 and a touchdown. The offense in Pittsburgh put up yards for the first time yeah. in a long, long time. Yeah, weird. Guess who they play next week? <laughs> Oh, no, for real? Are they Arizona? Arizona. Oh, my goodness. So, Najee and Warren, uh, shall we claim them as stars yeah, of the week already? I'll go Najee. Uh, I'll take Warren. Uh, uh, dang it. If you didn't see the run, yeah, Pittsburgh already favored by five and a half. If you did not see the, not enough. the, the Najee run where – it's, I mean, it's an incredible highlight. It's the normal it thing. It made no sense. No, no. He runs forward, gets a good gain, runs into the pile. And it becomes, Big pile. It becomes the huge pile of, I don't know, like 10 guys all trying to push each other backwards or forward. The pile kind of moves, kind of moves. And then the, the pile disintegrates. <laughs> <laughs> but remaining is Nachi Harris, who then runs like another 15 yards. It's like one of those cartoons, you know, when the cartoon uh, scram, like yes. the fight happens, yes. and it's a big dust pile, and then it keeps going, but somebody comes out the other end and it just keeps going. Yeah, that's, it's notchy. It was very funny. Uh, Mike Evans, two more touchdowns, six Dude, for 70. He's on fire. Almost yeah. had a third. I mean, before the week, he was the wide receiver seven on the year. What a great call. I'm very happy that that worked out. I mean, he's just been so consistent, too. Uh, at this point in the year, he is uh, – is he in double-digit touchdown range yet? No, he's at nine. nine. Yeah. 850 yards receiving already with uh, six games left and seems to be the go-to guy for a team that has now lost six of seven. Hmm. And every game it seems like Baker has a chance to come back in. Yeah, they're they're in most of these games. They don't mm -hmm. seem like a bad team to me. They get to play Carolina next week. And th they'll prove my point. Tyree Kale, 12 targets, unstoppable. Jalen Waddle, big game, eight for 114. On Black Friday. Did you guys watch the Black Friday game? Yeah, I sure mm -hmm. did. <laughs> I made myself. <laughs> yeah. Was, yeah. Wasn't the best watch. Zay Flowers, two touchdowns, one yeah. through the air, one <laughs> on the ground, and not uh, a lot of yards. No. No. The the touchdowns saved the day here. Uh, the consolidation happened with the absence of McCall Hardman, the absence of Kadarius Tony, and then one monstrous play. Rashi Rice, baby, 10 targets. 
eight for 107 and a touchdown. Every time he's touched the ball this entire year, I think everybody has watched and said, why isn't he touching the ball more? And sometimes it's really discouraging because the way he touches the ball is the screen game. Mm -hmm. And you're just like, does he not have the ability to score? I mean, even let's just be fair. Like the Rashi Rice touchdown was one of those, um, you know, crossing routes five yards from the line of scrimmage. And he just turned the corner and turned on the Jets. And it was a, a monstrous touchdown. But, you know, for whatever reason, he's not super involved downfield. But when you take away some of the other options, I man, do, it I, paid it paid a big dividend for Dynasty um, and and for the rest of the season. The fact that he's not really used downfield as much as you would hope for, you know, a primary wide receiver, that gives him a, a, an easy and clear path of being upgraded for fantasy for just you know being more involved in the offense because he can. I, I don't believe that uh, we've seen anything that says he can't be used successfully down the field. We've seen a couple good deeper plays on the season. They're just manufacturing short yardage touches for not just him, for the whole offense. I, I'm really disappointed with – I mean, you can't, can't argue too much. Uh, you know, they scored 31 points, and they're still a great team, great offense, the Chiefs are. But I do feel like you look at all the stats post Tyreek Hill leaving, and it's like Patrick Mahomes is just – everything is a check down everything well, is a screen I, everything is an underneath shorter than 15 yards it's like why let's have the discussion because you're going to have i mean you bring up a good point jason he has patrick mahomes has two games where he has finished inside the top six okay two out of 12 or i'm sorry two out of 11 games yeah uh even this past week you finished at quarterback eight which is fine but it's 20 points 16 15 five 33, that was great, against the Chargers. 17, 19, 13, 25, 21, 19. Do you have confidence? Because you always have. Do you have confidence going into your fantasy playoffs locking Mahomes into your lineup? Hmm. That's, that's, I think it's a really hard question. It's tough because to bench Mahomes, you would have to have – high level of confidence in the replacement. So it's like, if you, had, like Dak. if you had picked up Dak, I think the only other name I can think there of. There is another one. Yeah. The only other name I could think of that's like you could easily have him available. It's sure. C.J. Stroud. Stroud. Because yeah. C.J. Stroud's just been way better for fantasy. I was in a league uh, where a few weeks ago the manager had Mahomes and Stroud. Offered me Stroud at the time. I turned the trade down. Offered me Mahomes instead. Took the trade. Whoops. Whoops. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe whoops. Yeah. Their defense is, is very good. Um, They're also just – Their not, fantasy playoffs are New England, in New England, then Las Vegas and Cincinnati. They're not scoring the way they usually Las do. Las Vegas is not a great matchup for quarterbacks usually. Cincinnati is a great matchup. What was the first week New of England. playoffs? New England's fine. New in England New England. just stinks. Uh, if you want to see C.J. Strouds, you're talking about at Tennessee, which is a, a very good matchup for quarterbacks. Then Cleveland, um, mm. not good, and then of course Tennessee again because that Texans, the mm, Titans. I think what you what you're lacking are the battles. I mean, the the Charger game was much more of a, you know, like we saw with Philadelphia and Buffalo. But you're not having teams put up big points against them, and that's my worry. Like that's after, the concern I have. After week three, I started talking about. I've got massive worry about Mahomes because this defense is legit. And they, if he doesn't get into shootouts, the like he can go out and put up forty fantasy points. We know that, but he might not need to. And they might just say, "Hey, let me give Pacheco another fifteen carries and five dump offs." And those dump offs they go a little bit to Mahomes, but they're not going to score as much. They're, they keep the clock moving. They keep the Chiefs winning. They don't put points up for fantasy the same way. Devontae Smith seven for one hundred six and a touchdown. Nico Collins and Tank Dell. Uh, Nico did the work in the second half. Tank Dell did the work in the first half. Both scored. Uh, I couldn't believe Tank Dell seemed like he was going to end the game with 700 yards and 12 touchdowns the way it started, but he did disappear the second half. It was very troubling. I had a lot of players disappear and not even perform in the second half. I felt like, Jason, you were you were casting spells or mixing some sort of brew over wherever you were they you just stopped all the second halves man. i genuinely by that point i all hope had been lost like i wasn't <laughs> i didn't even care at that point i wasn't even like hopeful 
I was just like, okay, well, let's move on to next week. Uh, Gabe Davis, seven, six for 105 and a touchdown. <laughs> he's back, baby. Shove him in your lineups. <laughs> just kidding. He's on by. Um, yeah, thank goodness. Uh, Stephon Diggs, six for 74 yes, and a thank touchdown. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. Bye week is the favorite. It's my favorite week to have Gabe Davis on my roster. Oh, man. Which if I would, he, never, if, I would if, never do. If he was starting next week, like – that's so People will chase that. Oh, I will chase. I'm like, no, I can't do it. I'm so happy he's on by. It, who he does? Sh- when he are shows you up. actually happy? Like, I'm genuinely happy that my player is unavailable. <clears throat> that makes That's it- ridiculous. Yeah. yeah, Calvin Ridley, big game. Yeah. Debo, nice game. It was cool to see. Uh, Watson, five for ninety-four and a touchdown. Yeah. This one made sense to me just because you had some injuries at the wide receiver room, but. Nice to see it happen. I, I mean, I get that. I, what didn't make sense was the Packers dominating. Thr- yeah, just, just absolutely throttling the Lions. I mean, that was a shock. What is going on with Jared Goff? Yeah, I, he he hasn't looked great. This he last was thinking two. about that turkey and gravy. Maybe. He his mind was not in the game. I mean, two weeks ago you had the three the three pick game against uh, I think it was the Bears, and they were horrifically bad. And then at home, and then the whole first half. Jared Goff looked like he totally forgot how to play quarterback. I, it was a very, very strange situation. Michael Pittman? Hmm. 13 targets? Hmm. 10 for 107? Also, update, hmm. had I made that trade and put Michael Pittman over Josh Downs, I also win. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well. But to be fair to myself, I told you I regretted it yeah. way what before this. I said I was wrong, and I, and, and I was just proven – that's that's why I only said hmm. okay. if you could go back. <laughs> if I could go back, I would take the trade. I would win. <laughs> and I would have Michael Pippen. Well, I'm a dummy. Uh, Keenan <laughs> Such Allen. Such an idiot. Why didn't I do it? <laughs> All, Mike Mike might uh, pay more attention to his vindictive stat tracking than he does his own team. Yeah. Over the course. Who does it? Way more fun. As a, <laughs> over the course of the weekend, we're like, Mike was turned down on multiple Pittman trades. And he's just tracking each of those teams' scores to see <laughs> the player they chose to go with over yeah. Pittman. Whether it, it wasn't just you, I mean, he was tracking yeah. another guy in our league. Oh man, just it, to see if he could dunk on him. It's my start of the week, and also going up against Tennessee, Cincinnati, Pittsburgh the next three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Would be a great guy. Hope to you have. have Michael Pittman. <laughs> great guy to have. Yeah, sixteen more targets for Keenan Allen. He can't do it alone though, and um, but he can do it for your fantasy team. He sure tried, and he sure was alone. Here we are. Aust- oh Austin Eckler doesn't exist. Quentin Johnston, another drop. Doesn't uh, exist. He, I mean, he just has no weapons there. Have you seen the memes going around? Because Quentin Johnston is oh, the one who – Huge also got banged up. Huge had the uh, – at the draft, he told his mom to quit her job and she'll never have to work again. And It's, mm. it's nice. I hope that's true. Uh, Tyler Higby, two touchdowns out of nowhere. Yeah. Pat Fryer, like this, this, was, this was the big story. Yes. Yeah, baby. Nine for 120, the first – I mean, honestly, did he have 120 yards on the season? On no, the season he no way. Had, uh, I believe he had 60 total yards or so. I'm on it. He was on pace for 200 yards on the season. Yep, he had 60 yards. Yeah, and then he was uh, nine for 120. You know, you could call it an outlier if this had happened under Matt Canada, but maybe, just maybe, they made it a focus to throw it to the middle of the field. If you look at the passing charts under Matt Canada, it was all to the boundary. And that was the problem. Where mm-hmm. Pat Fryermuth is not running routes at the boundary. And I, then, I will say that you know Cincinnati is one of those matchups that we've targeted all year. They're great. You know they they can't stop the tight end position. So I'm very hopeful that this is offensive changes uh, with Canada out and having a really talented. I mean that was what we talked about when I when we talked about the trade I made for Fryermuth is like he is talented. Pat Fryermuth is a very good yes, NFL tight end. Yes, he is. And if they choose to use him that way, he will be successful. They chose to use him this way. You hope use going, the Muth. You hope that going forward, this is the new normal, as opposed to just the game plan against Cincinnati. But I could see either one being true. And then nice games from Laporta and Kelsey again this week. Thanks again to our sponsor of the Studs. We're talking NFL Sunday Ticket on YouTube and YouTube TV with NFL Sunday Ticket. It's never been easier to keep up with all of your fantasy players and Gabe Davis. Watch the rest of the NFL season for half the price at 174 bucks when bundled with YouTube TV. Sign up at youtube.com slash fantasy footballers. Terms and embargoes apply. No refunds. 
pooped in his big boy pants. Well, Tua? Yeah. Brock Purdy? Mm-hmm. Oh, just hold on. for Because Tua, I, to me, Tua, uh, you know, go rewind like three weeks or, go, uh, or so. He was one of the six quarterbacks. We were like, no, I'm good. I put Tua in no matter what's going on. And, you know, since week eight, we, he was the QB nine at just under 22 points, then 12 and a half, then 17, now eight. I didn't like the schedule over the back half of the year at all. Yeah, it, but I'm saying the it was a rough schedule, but you it's Tyreek, it's Jalen Waddle, Tua can have these huge explosive games. Is it back to I'm – Really looking at the matchups? I mean, Washington yeah, I mean, and I mean, Tennessee you, the, Your playoffs fine. are the Jets, Dallas, and Baltimore. That's a problem. From here, I think Tua gets you to the playoffs because Washington and Tennessee are the next two weeks. Should be great. But the 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 playoff weeks, if you can find someone else that you're confident in, you maybe make plans in case you see something along the way that, that says, yeah, I've got a better option for a great matchup in week 15. Purdy disappointed. Justin Herbert is – not his fault. He's just all alone, man. <laughs> He's just all alone doing his best. But he got – I mean, Keenan had a fumble. Eckler had a fumble. They didn't have they possession of the ball. four turnovers, I think. Oh, my gosh, that whole first half. It was like they had the ball 90 seconds. I'm just watching, waiting for Eckler to do something, and he can't because the second they get the ball, they play fast too. So it was like they are – they are moving. They are like on the line. Like their three and outs are fast. Their three, three and, and outs are like, I hope you didn't go to the bathroom because you're <laughs> not going to understand why Baltimore has the ball again. No, their players went to the bathroom instead. Uh, Lamar Jackson, he, there are weeks you don't yep. need him. You just don't. Yep. He's got a little bit of the same Mahomes issue with the defense being really good. Shootouts are what you want, and there's not been a lot of shootouts for Kansas City or Baltimore. And and to be fair, like the the Chargers defense looked really good. They were they were bottling up. I mean, you 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 talk about like you don't need them. They kind of did here. They only scored 20 points and that really was a, the majority of the game. They were, you know, in the teens. I'm going to say some tough stuff now cuz we're moving on to running backs. For well, the last 4 weeks, Bree saw 16 for 50, 13 for 28, 10 for 23, 7 for 25. Um 2.7 a carry over four weeks. Brees Hall is uh, finished 27, 30, 13, 29. Seven receptions for 24 yards. Yeah, nine targets from Tim Boyle is why I'm not worried because over the last several weeks, the place where he's given you good games is in the receiving work. So I'm happy with the targets. Uh, you're concerned for sure. Because he might not win your league. No, I agree with that. He, he is not a superstar when the offense can't score – 15 points it's crazy i mean he, he's very much he's in the saquon situation which is up next which is you know saquon was 12 for 46 the the disappointing thing here was you only got three targets to saquon mm-hmm. he only had one catch so it's a huge now he goes on by and um not going to help you this upcoming week eckler gus bus eckler is concerning like because is that two single-digit games in a row? Brees, yes, it is. Uh, Brees. 32 and 34. It looks explosive still. You know, you, you see usually every game he's got some 50-yard run come back on a hold. Um, but, he you know, he looks the part. He's just usually got five guys around him. Eckler right now looks like something is wrong. He does not look explosive or His yards special. per carry down four from 4.5 to 3.8. Yeah, and, and and even in the receiving game, it just he's got a lot of drops. He's fumbled it back to back weeks. His top speed is non existent. Yeah, I mean i i think I think I can hit fifteen miles an hour. Thirteen? No, no, no. That's what I'm saying. Oh, I think I can you hit. Think 15. You can beat him, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not in general, but like right now with whatever's going on with him, uh, it's it's really concerning. I mean, the next couple weeks. Are you? What do you do with? Do you? I feel like you're stuck playing him. Yeah, I mean, the snap count him. was at least at eighty percent, but there are a handful of these running backs you don't know what to do with. I mean, this next guy, I I am flabbergasted. I have no comp. James Conner, James Conner went six for twenty-seven in this game. Okay, 
He had four catches for five yards. James Conner played the same snaps that Michael Carter played. James Conner had six carries, and and Kyler Murray passed the ball 45 times. James Conner, I didn't see him on the field in the second half. I'm sure he was there maybe once or twice, but he, only, he legitimately had no carries. He only played 42% of the snaps, and it seems like right now with the system, he is not the – if you're down a lot, he's not that guy. I mean, that is – he's got Pittsburgh in the bye week. Pittsburgh in Pittsburgh. When they – yeah, they just didn't go to running backs. This Can you a, play him? This is a yeah. tweet from Jared Smola. Uh, this, I guess, was this was through the first three quarters of Week 12. Connor was six carries, four targets. DeMarcado was three carries. Michael Carter was one carry. I mean, they just they were not utilizing the position. But but that is a, a fundamental change from what happened at the end of last year, where he was on the field all the time, and he caught the ball better. He literally was. I mean, I think when you watch the games last year with the volume in the receiving game and the quality of receptions, he was one of the best pass-catching running backs in football. Mm -hmm. And now the team is saying, I've I've drawn up third down for DeMarcado and Michael Carter. I mean, he still had five targets in this game, which is great for a running back. Um, I, I think you, you don't know how much of the fourth quarter being really, really down and out was – protection was oh it's you know you're not our two-minute drill guy I don't know but going on the road to Pittsburgh that is not an offense that scares me I know that Arizona has a bad defense and they are the the you know the cure to a lot of woes out there but I think James Conner's a fine play this coming week Pittsburgh's not been phenomenal against the run so uh, okay okay yeah it was as somebody who was watching for something from James Conner it was a it was a tough one to to watch, but I hope you're right. I hope he's involved. I this team has got the second pick in the draft right now, and I just wonder if they're working other guys out or what. But Joe Mixon, oh, it's Cincinnati. This was a monstrous dud of a game. Cincinnati is broken. Uh, if you didn't watch the game and you're just only looking at like Jamar Chase's stat line, you're like, okay, I can live with that. Uh, two tip passes. Yeah, uh, March. over over half of his production was on two accidental tip, tip passes. So, uh, it's it's gonna be bad. <laughs> it's gonna be bad. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Zach Sharba, meh. Yeah, Sharbust. I mean, he his volume was fantastic. Yes. Four targets, fourteen carries, eighty eight percent in snaps. He led all. NFL running back, so it was exactly what you want. Um, it wasn't efficient, effective, great for fantasy. It was against the San Francisco 49ers, so you go, well, how much of that was just, hey, you're facing a great defense? Or how You mean much like is Dallas or San Francisco or Philadelphia the right, next three weeks? Right, yeah, that's the next but month. Just like th those last two guys, next week, would you rather play Mixon against the Jags or Charbonnet against Dallas? Charbonnet. And I would go Charbonnet. I'd play Mixon. Okay. Charbonnet has had a a very interesting ability to have a lot of snaps and no production. Yeah, but even his, when Walker was there, when Walker was there, he was getting a lot of snaps, but not a lot of opportunities, not touching mm -hmm. the ball. And now the opportunities are actually up 21 last week, 18 this past week. Uh, I'm going to take that volume and the chance that Seattle scores more than the chance that the Browning led Bengals score. Okay, I think that's a tight one. Yeah, it's, you it's, got, is it tight I for don't you? want yeah. to start either. Yeah. <laughs> Wide receiver duds, we talked about it. Cooper Cup, Puka Nakua. Um, Cleveland-Baltimore coming up. It's going to be tough. Uh, DK Metcalf, nine targets, back to uh, a subpar game. Tyler Lockett, just three for 30 as well. So Metcalf, Lockett, and Smith and Jig, but all three were disappointments. Along with Charbonnet. The, the Along Niners, with just Seattle. Yeah, the, the Niners kept San Francisco – or the, the Niners – kept Seattle to 13 total points in the game. Well, the wide receiver five in weeks one through six, Adam Thielen, has been the wide receiver 44 from weeks eight on after the bye. Who oh, no. knew? One catch, two yards. The gas tank ran out. Are you moving on? Uh, no. I, I'm not, like, no. leaving. I'm not. Uh, Mingo led the team. Yeah. I'm not dropping him, but um, I'm fine looking at, you yeah. know, it was, waiting. You know, last week. He was at 11 targets, 8 for 74 against Dallas. DeAndre Hopkins and Amari Cooper, both huge disappointing weeks. Cooper can't do much right now, and now he's hurt. Man, Banana Rama got us. He got us so good. <laughs> Will Levis, you sneaky snook. Banana I mean, 
you, you, you come out that first week when no one was Guns prepared blazing. for yeah. you. And but you were out like, of ammo. Yeah. You, I mean, you you made everyone who said you were not good and going to be bad like yeah. we did look so foolish that first week because it was like, oh, man. But I he's guess, on a winning streak now. I guess. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Play Carolina more. Um, yeah. He's not good. Uh, Terry McLaurin uh, continues to disappoint. Deontay Johnson, four for 50. Still thought he had a touchdown. I think he had a touchdown. Too. I mean, that was. In college. <laughs> no, it was, yeah. I mean, we're talking about the back of the end zone one. Yeah, uh, where he, you got to survive the ground. But to me, it looked like he had caught it, was turning, and then got pushed to the ground. Yeah, but it looked like a like a fumble was caused by the defender after three steps. I don't. Obviously, we're wrong. Yep. It wasn't a catch. Josh Downs had 13 targets. Um, he had some drops. He had some way off target targets, and he ended up five yeah. for 43. It's a shame. What a bummer. <laughs> <laughs> He's still a, probably a good. Play would you have won? Would you have won with Hollywood? I don't think so but i didn't look like, at that. like he wasn't actually a I just, consideration i was i was literally i, I told just you curious this if this like morning. all your bench wide receivers would have won you the game <laughs> i uh I, I told you this morning my plan was to put in gabe davis over I checked, josh downs yeah. that, I that was your, what i meant i checked to do. your team every single day expecting to see that happen and i went to the cabin for the thanksgiving weekend and lost you dummy yeah whoops uh tight ends that let you down dalton schultz just one for two george kittle Three for nineteen. Jake, this is what he does. Jake Ferguson one for thirty-five. Uh, Mr. Non-existent in the second half. Dalton Dalton Kincaid had six targets, five for thirty-eight, and then they didn't use him again. Yeah, he looked really. And he was good out there on game. every play. He looked really good. Like the the five for thirty-eight he got, I thought was was really nice. He got overthrown on one of those passes that he you know wasn't his fault and looked good and then disappeared. But it, all while Buffalo scoring and doing great, so you can't really criticize it. Uh, they go into the bye. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah, Gabe Davis, Gabe Davis. remember? Oh, yeah. yeah. Isaiah Likely, four for 40. Eh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm taking that off yeah, of I'm the ta list. Yeah, take that out. I boo that. Take that. That's fine. Waiver wire, four for 40? Yeah, that's yes, fine. That's six points. That's I mean, fine, Brooks. We'll take it out. Take it out, Brooks. <laughs> J Jason's it's not likely mad. to win you a week. No, it isn't. But it's not likely to lose you one either. Yeah, I mean, you. I mean, it's, it's certainly not. Oh, like you would have lost by point eight four if you played Hollywood. Oh, all right, <laughs> good. <laughs> okay, crazy. We didn't talk about Hollywood, but uh, that Arizona game. Oh, Ky how was? I mean, Kyler. I guess he had a rushing touchdown. That was one of the most abysmal was, offensive performances I've ever seen. Everyone wants to blame just the offensive line on it, and I'm like, Kyler was. No, Kyler inaccurate. Was yeah. All right, did we forget anybody? Mm. Looking over there. No. I mean, who knows? If yeah. we forgot him, we, we will never know. All right, we have a waiver show tomorrow. So uh, make sure you tune in. If you want to do something to help the show out, make sure you click that uh, follow button on Apple Podcasts, on Spotify. You can check out the community at jointhefoot.com. Lots of perks over there for people supporting the show. And... Uh, you know, keep fighting for those playoff spots. We'll be here to help you out. That'll do it for today's episode of the podcast. For Andy, Mike, and Jason, thank you for joining us. Catch you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.